Our scripture readings today certainly invite us into a rather serious and somber reflection upon temptation and sin. Each year on this first Sunday of Lent, we are invited to go with Jesus out into the desert where he fasted for 40 days. And at the end of that, he was tempted as the Israelites had been tempted in the desert. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is seen as the new Israel. The old Israel, of course, had been freed by God from slavery in Egypt, and they went into the desert, and then eventually into the Promised Land. But there were some primary sins that they fell into. The temptation towards materialism, thinking that the human spirit is satisfied most of all by material things more consumer products, if you will. And so they rebelled against God, demanding bread in the desert. And then they were presumptuous. They presumed that they were God's people, and therefore God would take care of them no matter what. And so that sin of presumption was one that afflicted them and that they embraced in their life. And finally, there was that betrayal, worshiping the golden calf, going after the idols, rather than being faithful to God himself. Those temptations that the Israelites succumbed to, Jesus faces there in the desert, but he is not overcome by them, but rather overcomes them with a greater trust in the love of the Father. And so we in our lives, are invited to reflect upon the fact that the same temptations can be there for us. The temptations to materialism, to be so tied up in creature comforts that we begin to think that that's the primary thing that we need in our life, rather than a deeper relationship with God and others in a spirit of loving prayer and service. We are tempted to become presumptuous that think because we are the children of a loving God, our sins are forgiven no matter what we do. That sin of presumption is when we sin just thinking, well, God's going to forgive me. God will never hold me accountable. But the necessary thing is always sorrow for sin, contrition for sin, in order that God may forgive us. And finally, we're all called to worship the gods of our own culture, the gods of our own time, the gods that would lead us away from the true God. And whether that God be money or sports or just personal indulgence, whatever that ultimate meaning or purpose we give in life, that that afflicts us as well. And so we are invited during the Lenten season to challenge ourselves about the temptations that we experience. And to realize, as we've talked about in that first reading today, that the basic sin was the sin of Adam and Eve. And the sin of Adam and Eve was not eating an apple. That's not the sin of Adam and Eve. I think in grade school we all learned that, and somehow it sticks in our consciousness, that that's the basic sin. It wasn't eating an apple. It even says there in scripture that the devil serpent is tempting Eve and ultimately Adam. And what does he say? God told you not to eat that fruit because you will be like unto God, knowing good and evil. The basic sin of Adam and Eve was that of wanting to be God themselves, of determining their own source of life and their own source of happiness, determining for themselves what was good for them, what was the purpose, the meaning of life itself. They wanted to be like unto God. And unfortunately, that is the basic part of any sin, is that we want to be our own God. We want to determine for ourselves rather than living in relationship with our Creator. And because of that sin, Adam and Eve no longer have access to the tree of life. And therefore, physical death in Scripture is seen 
as one of the results of spiritual sin is the fact that we all experience that reality of physical death. But the second reading today is such a powerful reading of hope, where Paul reminds us that yes, through the disobedience of one, all have sinned. We all have the effects of original sin, those weaknesses within ourselves. But because of the obedience of one, of Jesus, we all have forgiveness of sins in the gift of salvation, in the promise of eternal life. What a beautiful invitation that is for us to reflect upon the challenges of our lives, the temptations we may experience, yes, the sin that maybe we embrace, but to know that there is a Redeemer, there is forgiveness, there is reconciliation, there is that promise of eternal life if we but open ourselves to God's grace. The season of Lent is a season of grace. It's a time for each of us to enter more deeply into personal reflection upon our lives and how we more can be more open to that grace, that forgiveness, that loving life of Christ Jesus.